In this video, I want to continue our discussion of conditional distributions to discuss the continuous case. And I'm not going to labour this point too much, hopefully, because we've already learned essentially what a conditional distribution is in the previous video. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk about a specific example. And it's the example that we've used before. So we imagine that we're randomly sampling an individual from the population and we ask that individual how much beer they drink in a given week and we measure their level of body fat. And given this example, a question that we might be interested in is what is the uncertainty? Another way of saying uncertainty is to sort of say what is the probability distribution for an individual's level of beer that they drink, so for beer volume, given that we know that the fat of the body fat of that individual is equal to 10 kilograms. So in essence, what we're doing now is we're updating our knowledge in light of the fact that we know the individual has a level of body fat, which is 10 kilograms. Before they told us that, we were uncertain about that part of the system as well. So how can we actually think about working out what this probability distribution looks like? Well, intuitively, what we can do is we can imagine marking off on our body fat axis a point of 10, and we can imagine drawing a line across from 10. Then what we do is we imagine as we kind of did before, that we are walking along this line. But now, it's not quite the same as marginal distributions. It's actually simpler. All we need to do is we just keep track of how high we are as we move across this path. So we can imagine walking along and being fairly flat to begin with, and then eventually we reach an area of higher density, which tails off fairly quickly, until when we reach this part of the curve, again, we're relatively low down, and hence our conditional distribution is also quite low. So this distribution that I've drawn here would be the probability distribution of beer volume given that f is equal to 10. What about if instead we observed that f was equal to 5? So here, if f was equal to 5, we again, we sort of imagine that we're walking across this terrain, which is governed by this probability distribution. And now what we see is that we walk uphill much more quickly, and then we reach a maximum, and then we go down to the bottom again. And that sort of happens more quickly than it did for the previous case. And so our distribution is sort of shifted to the left, our conditional distribution corresponding to beer volume, given that an individual has a level of body fat, which is five kilograms. So we've sort of intuitively reasoned how to derive the conditional distribution in this case, but what's a formula that will allow us to derive it in any case? Well, the idea is that we can find it by just using the same form that we used for the discrete case. So the probability of beer volume or the probability density of beer volume, given that F is equal to 10 is just equal to the joint distribution of beer volume and F being equal to 10 divided through by the probability of F being equal to 10. And I should be actually a bit more careful here. Really what we're dividing through by is the probability density associated with F being equal to 10. Because remember, for a continuous distribution, the probability of any one particular value is zero, and p here, little p, what we're dealing with, actually represents a probability density function. So the denominator here is just a marginal distribution. And remember how we sort of reasoned what a marginal distribution is in the continuous case. We sort of imagine walking along the line corresponding to f being equal to 10, and we sort of keep track of the amount of energy that we expend in walking along that path. Alternatively, a different way of thinking about that is sort of just recording what the average height is along that path. And all we do is we calculate 
that quantity and that will just give us a number. The denominator here is just a number. And then this thing up the top here is the joint distribution, which is actually a function here. And so what we get out is we get out a probability distribution function, which represents our conditional. Also remember that a different question would be to say, well, let's imagine that the individual drinks one liter of beer a week. What would be the conditional distribution of body fat if that was the case? Well, the idea is that, again, we now imagine that we're walking along a path, but now the path is vertical and we just trace out the height which we are above the average here. We see that we go up and then we go down, or technically I should have gone the other way, but you can see that it's no different to the other case, except that now we're walking vertically. So this would be the probability of body fat given that the individual drinks one liter of beer a week. So in summary, we see that the derivation of a conditional distribution for a continuous joint probability distribution is exactly the same as for the discrete case. We just take the joint distribution and we divide it through by the marginal.